Today on the breakfast, Kaduna Bay's Islamic scholar Sheikh Al Madgumi cautions Muslims against killing fellow human beings because of tribal issues, insisting that Prophet of Islam was insulted and scorned that he never killed in retaliation. Also on the breakfast, leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP. Mazi Namdi Kanu describes killing of innocent people on lawful restrictions of movement in the South is uh, senseless and says such heinous acts are perpetrated by groups masquerading as IPOP. And like always, we will be reviewing the biggest stories making headlines across national dailies. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast. I am Justin Akadone. And I am Messia Bopo. It's a beautiful Monday morning. <laughs> ah, beautiful Monday morning. Messia, do you know something about morning, uh, Mondays and the early morning rush and everything? Most people don't like Mondays. How are Mondays for you, really? I mean, so I'm indifferent. I, like I don't know whether day. I don't like Mondays or not, but I, I think that if you have enough rest over the weekend, then Mondays would not be a problem. Uh, depending on what you're engaging in, it feels mm. like that's part of our top training, but that's not the case. Mm. Depending on what <laughs> you're going to be doing. Yeah. Some people just feel like, oh, it's Monday and it's a horrible one. Yes. And that's because you have to get to work and everybody feels like, as oh my God. As, as though the weekend was I, short, I feel like a lot of people short. don't like work and that's why they get to talk about Monday. So, I know. Oh my Most God. people would rather just lay back. But you know, Mondays in Lagos just, just know that everybody day. wants to go to work. I mm. mean, those who didn't go to work three days ago want to. So the, the road would be, um, I mean, this you're going to have because of the poor road network, mm. and which I'm thinking that the Lagos state government would have been on top of this. If you say that this is, you know, uh, the business center, Africa's, what have you, commercial you go hub, on yeah. commercial city, but we should be looking at, you know, the road network, True, especially, uh, you know, on the island. Mm. The road network is not friendly, and that's why you have all of this traffic. If we have a better road network where there would be diversion and all of that, I'm not sure we're mm. going to have all of the drama. Lagos would be a beautiful city. Yeah, so, I just so hope um, the, uh, the authorities are listening from your lips to the rest <laughs> this morning. Let us just start off with um, top trend. We'll begin with something that was not, not really too cheering, not cheering at all. It, it actually is... A sad one. It happened. Uh, a commercial motorcyclist was beaten, burnt, uh, or they beat rather, they burnt uh, a sound engineer over some disagreement of a um, hundred naira balance. Mercy, just the other day, oh, still Nigerians are talking about how some people took laws into their hands and they beat and burnt um, Deborah, you know, Samuel in Sokoto State. And this one just happened recently. Over some misunderstanding, uh, it just went all right and uh, a guy was just killed because of 100 naira. So, I mean, a lot can actually happen. The, the, the truth is, as humans, I mean, you and I, every other person on this table, uh, every other human, because uh, in our daily interaction with people, we get to a point where we don't agree with a lot of stuff. And that's because we have different up upbringing, we lived in different environments, we probably would have been shaped by all of the experiences in our environment and we just have different approach to things and different opinion. But uh, at the end of the day, it's important that whatever disagreement, we need to understand how to handle conflict and disagreement. And at the points that you were angry about a certain thing, how do you react, including myself? I mean, we're all victims here because you could act irrational. But I mean, you get to that point where the, the adrenaline has been pumped. It's not an excuse, but the point is conflict management is important. Mm. Whether we have to make it as a, you know, elementary cost for people to understand, we have to find a way to let people mm. understand that, yes, manage their disagreement, dispute, mm. find a better way to solve problems and conflict without resorting to violence. That's it. Like I always say, violence has never solved anything. It's it never solved the problem. It doesn't that approach has never solved the problem. And but in, in the spur of the moment, you could just get very bitter and it happens. So it's just a reaction before you know. You have done something very nasty, something very hard, and that's why it's back. important that self-control. But he doesn't. It's it cheap. Is I mean, talk is cheap. That's what you you want I to know, see I at know, this but point. A lot of people should realize that there's a first rule of um, thumb uh, for things like this. 
Whenever you are angry, the first thing for you to do, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist, but it actually makes sense. Whenever you're angry, the first thing for you to do is just calm down. Don't, re don't do the first thing that comes to your mind because at the end of most times, it's usually not the, the best thing. You know, so if you're angry, no matter what the situation, I know it might be hard. They might be telling you some crazy things, some harsh things, maybe insulting your mother, your father, if I catch you or something. But whatever it is, the first thing to do is just to calm down. Because if you're reactionary for the first instance, it might be boom, boom, boom. So, so, so you understand that it's, it's not that easy. No, right? it's not. But yeah. we just have and that's to a, be yeah, you have to. about it. What happens is when you have all of the energy pumping and the adrenaline. That's Mercy, what I have a lot of adrenaline, but I don't want to pump you like, punch you like every <laughs> you other day. You never can tell what will happen. <laughs> this I mean, I'm not trying to hold breath for anyone mm. you know, in anger, but it's such a difficult situation to be in. And most times, you find out that those people who act extra, like for instance, now that incident, you kill someone at the end, because of 100 naira. 100 naira. So you, 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 you could probably just go back and be like, what happened? Ah. What really happened? How did we get to this point? Hmm. 100 naira, really? Just 100 naira. So um, we just, we have to be responsible for ourselves and our action. We have to be cautious. There's this statement, there's this quote, popular quote that I had stumbled over that you would never have a control um, over how people would treat you, what they would do, when they would do it, and how they would do it. Mm -hmm. But what you have control over is Zero how you actions. react. Yes. So let's understand that we can never tell. Anybody can walk mm -hmm. into this studio right now and give me a slap. <laughs> uh, you know, slap me in the face or punch me. And th the point is, because you can never tell. Mm. But what do I do? So mm -hmm. let's all be responsible at that point and know that, you know, you have a lot of persons who are out there very triggered. But that's not an excuse. I know that the law would definitely take its course because if you don't want to do the crime, then just... Uh, be ready to do the time. Exactly. It's, it is really sad. But I'll just leave it at that. But this is a message out to every Nigerian. Please, whatever it is that we are doing, let us always be conscious of the next person. I know sometimes you get into disagreements. Uh, it could get very heated. Because I understand it wasn't just him that was involved. His friends, too, were also beaten. Oh, hundred <laughs> there. They, they, they were beaten to their unconscious. It's, it is sad, you know, the rate so, at which so people... If, if, you, if you've ever patronized, I mean, if you've ever patronized, you know, public transportation, you know how it can be. Mm. I know sometimes where way back, you probably have to be like, you know, how much is it again? You know, somebody should just, let's move on. Like, 100 naira cannot be the problem. Nigerians are But agitated. you can imagine. <laughs> I'm just saying that They'll tell you the 100 can buy them a bottle of water. So it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a very funny time. Uh, when I say funny, it's funny in the sense that a lot of people are very edgy this period. True. A lot of people are going through stuff. First of all, you see that government policy is not even mm. reflecting the interests of the people. People are not getting what they want. And so everybody seems to be agitated, the slightest thing. Also, somebody could just say good morning to you and you're pissed. Yeah, what's like, good about the morning? Uh, what <laughs> is it now? Why are you greeting me now? Exactly. No, it happens so a lot. It could, it could call for a lot of reaction. I remember my first time. <laughs> My first period. Let me just share this quickly. Okay. You know, so I mean, I've lived in cities where there's a lot of peace. I always avoid Lagos for as much as I would. You would be shocked that I grew up oh, in this really? city, but I avoid it. You grew up in Lagos? Yes, of course. Mercy, I thought you were a typical <laughs> about girl. No, 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 no. I, <laughs> I grew up. Way. I grew up here. I grew up in the West. Oh, you know, for the wow. most part of it. And yes, I can't even say. Um, but the point is, I've always, <laughs> for everything I want to do, yeah. I like to do holidays here and then just get away. Okay. And just so the peace and quiet. So my initial experience was that, you know, coming around. And I got a lot of people just angry. They want to tell you something. Somebody's agitated. They are shouting. I'm like, oh, God, why are you shouting? What's the problem? <laughs> Welcome to Lagos. And I'm like, if you, it's not even making sense. I'm wondering that. You know, I'm wondering. And, and I'm asking myself, that, why, are you, why are you so angry? What's, what's going on? No, That's you don't need to. Oh, God, it's not, it's not that serious. Calm ah. down. <laughs> and then before... <laughs> So it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just uh, funny and it's very, but we need to be responsible. For every time we talk about Nigeria and mm. we constantly say that, we need to be on top of the issue. We compare ourselves with different countries uh, within the region and also even though in the principle of comparison, you can't compare things that are not on the same pole. True. So it would be wrong for you to begin compare to say, oh, the US Africa, and Nigeria. Africa, yeah. So you compare stuff within, for instance, you, it would be okay to say Nigeria and Ghana and other countries in the West African region, which is fair. Or probably, you know, in Africa, you can say Nigeria. 
Nigeria and Egypt, mm -hmm. Nigeria and South Africa. But most times, that's what the principle is. But we need to know that in these countries where things are actually working, that we perceive things are working and people are behaving in a, you know, in a better way, people are acting differently. It's because they're, you know, they're responsible for all of that. And if we have to get there, then we need to understand it on, on a daily basis. We have to make excuses for people. We have to be very tolerant. We have to be very patient and uh, in our course of interaction. People will always be people, as long as me and you would meet, you and I would meet, mm. there would always be conflict of interest because True. of different backgrounds and we should, we should just learn how to manage people, manage Tolerance the times, would be manage the, the situation. So at least I uh, would not just be, you know, committing murders that we never really, you know, but the people plan for more. Some people plan to murder others, but then this one would have been avoidable or avoided if uh, the parties involved actually just uh, were calm about. Let's just move on to something else. Oh, we're going next to the Abuja Kaduna train. Uh, it's been over 48 days, I understand, or uh, going to 50 right now. But uh, I don't know if I'll call it um, a bit of a cheering news. Uh, I uh, remember about is it 62 people that were kidnapped or uh, during the attack uh, in March. Uh, from what we hear, uh, a pregnant woman was actually involved. And this time around, uh, reports are saying that um, the terrorists have released uh, the pregnant woman. Maybe they just didn't want her to give birth in the uh, den or whatever could be the station. But the fact is that um, they don't deserve to be with you. Be they pregnant, be they, they are Nigerians, let them go. Please just let them go. So, um, I mean, according to that report, I mean, looking at it, it feels like uh, there's this always still a human part to mm. every terrorist that still do have, you know, some conscience because people would say that those who are without conscience are the ones who would act in this particular manner. The question would be, where's your conscience? Because as a human being, I always say that before you are anything, whatever it is professionally, Whatever classification you want to go about, you need to understand that you're a human being. Yes, and so first. we have lost humanity. But should we, you know, put our hands together for this terrorist and say, hey, you've done fantastic for releasing the pregnant woman. It just shows you that, you know, there's that element of humanity still with them. There would still, it's still possible for them to have their way for whatever reason they're doing that. I mean, uh, Maybe we should applaud them. I really do not know what to say. I mean, it's a lot of mixed reaction. So, yes, because they could as well said, you know, she can be here and mm. she has the baby and then they recruit the baby or yeah, just hold on to the baby. Uh, yeah, it could just go. Um, it, it could have. Yeah. So I, I think that at the end of the day, it boils down to the fact that we all have the choice situation. Um, there's always that element of humanity with us and I wish we can dig deeper. I wish they can. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem here is most times with these terrorists, you ask yourself, especially with this group of persons, what exactly are they fighting? What is the cause mm. of action? For a group of persons, what are you fighting for? Uh, what are you getting at? But it's a lot when you talk about indoctrination. They have gotten to this point where they are acting very, um, you know, acting extreme. without caution. Mm. Yeah, extreme because that part of humanity has been shot out. Yes, it is really. Should a we sub, say, you know, you know a, a plus to them? I don't know. Yeah, but we are. We to, we to appreciate. They, 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 well, we appreciate the fact that the woman has been released, but we still have other Nigerians still in your den. Release them. I know prayers have been organized uh, in Kaduna State interfaith or uh, inter inter religious uh, groups. Uh, that's the Muslim, the Christian, uh, women and children. Uh, yesterday, you know, they trooped out and they held prayers for uh, victims and the families are actually hopeful that maybe someday uh, they will be reunited with their loved ones and they will be safe. We just hope, you know, that something is done and then these people, you know, laugh at the end of it all. Uh, let's just move away from that to the next uh, topic trending. Uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria now have um, a new uh, coach, head coach. He is uh, a 62-year-old. Uh, his name is Jose uh, Pacero. Uh, I think he's Portuguese. Uh, Mercy, this time around we're also having another um, foreign-based coach, and I hear um, former international uh, Finidi will be assisting. So um, Pacero uh, has been on top of that prior to this time. I think early 2022, there was a lot of buzz about having Pacero as Super Eagles coach, and then we had the back and forth, the argument of the fact that if you look at his antecedent and his record, uh, he doesn't even match it. He's not fit because mm. how many clubs have he 
you know, manage and what's mm -hmm. his success, history of his success. So we started feeling like it's, it's like we're relegating ourselves. Um, you know, we're just always relegating ourselves. Okay. We get to take ourselves to that point. Why do we have to settle for less? That, that was we, really the argument about know his antecedents. Why and then settle he, for him? Yeah, that, that's it. If you look at his antecedents, his coach history, what fantastic thing has he done? What, oh, wow. what really has he achieved, you know, um, in his career, in his lifetime in football, uh, if you want to say so? And that got a lot of Nigerians talking. And then a lot of people started talking about the fact that, oh, why do we always go for foreign coach? And even if we're going to go for, for a foreign coach, but do we need Pissero? Do we really need him? Um, it's the question that was also put out. But unfortunately, as always, you hear the whole, okay, we're not going for him. It's just a, a rumor. It's in the speculative. Before you say, no, you close been, your eyes. It's been confirmed. He's been appointed. It's been confirmed. So it, it brings us back to the fact that for every time you hear all of this speculation, it feels like there's some element of truth. It might just become a reality. Mm, what they share, well, let's see how all fire. of that pans out. And I'm sure that as we progress in mm. the course of the week, we will definitely talk about um, what the I'm future sure would hold for the Super Eagles with uh, Pesaro as a coach. Well, let's not just give a dog a bad name. Let's um, just keep our fingers crossed. But the facts are actually there. I know his uh, records, uh, you know, speak for him. But um, as it is, so let's not just begin to, uh, you know, make so much uh, condemnation for him. But we'll just see what he let's, let's just give him the benefit of a doubt. And if he's not good, we should not do the whole thing of... Um, Let's manage or let's manage. Well, he's been day. appointed. Uh, I mean, well, Justin, well, there's really nothing you're going to do about this. Well, if he's not the performing, but he has, he has, to, he has, to, he has like two friendlies. He has, a, <laughs> he has two friendlies. Uh, not too far. You know, he has one with Ecuador and another country. I think we should use that as Mexico. Status, right? Yeah, Mexico. We use that to test him. And if he flops, mercy. So are you? We are can you take back his contract NFL, too. <laughs> I'm a Nigerian you know, first too. Uh, no, there's, you, there's I'm Nigerian right. football federation. I'm a Nigerian, so I'm a mistake. No, I that. totally understand. But are you? Are you now sounding like the, an assistant? Uh, and maybe I might be in their technical team. Who knows? I might be consulted for them. The, the, <laughs> we, the deed has already been done. We have yes, to deal it with it, and that's yes, it. it Fingers crossed we'll definitely come back with this conversation in the course of the week. But in the meantime, let's take a break. When we return, it will be time for us to go through the front pages of our National Daily Space with us.